I made $4,264,717 in 2023 and I'm only 32 years old. The crazy part is there were times throughout this year where I absolutely hated my life. In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down the 10 biggest lessons I've learned along this journey, as well as what you need to know if you want to be successful in 2024. This is the juicy stuff that Hormozy, Iman Gutsi, and all these other gurus don't talk about. So if you wanna be a better father, a better husband, a better man in the new year, and I hope my mistakes, my lessons, and my advice can help you in some way. Before I share these lessons with you, you're probably wanting some proof to actually go, what the fuck is this guy saying? Is he actually legit? I'm gonna share with you that proof right now, as well as a bit of a story as to how I got here that may inspire you. So this is our Stripe account. As you can see, $2.7 million this year, up 1,000%. Our monthly recurring revenue is almost at 150 grand. And where has the rest of the money come from? Well, look, we have had $3.6 million of cash collected in our business and our properties have grown about 580,000. This is our property tracker right here. And I'll make sure my videographer just blurs out the addresses so you don't come to my addresses. So that equals a total of $4,264,717. Now I'm not sharing this with you to brag because as you're about to learn, there were a lot of fuck ups along the way and that number is extremely deceptive, but no one on YouTube talks about this sort of stuff. So I'm about to share with you the 10 lessons that can help you make this sort of money. But before I do, you've got to understand the story behind how I actually got here. Look, I was very young when my daughter was born. It was July 2021 and my entire world had always been about running a business, making money, being successful. Why? So I could provide for my family. I achieved everything I wanted at the age of just 30 years old. I had multiple properties, a portfolio of four properties. I had the family I'd always wanted. I had a business that was making seven plus figures a year. And from there, I went on a deep, dark decline. From July, 2021 to December, 2022, I completely lost myself. I stopped eating well. I stopped exercising. I didn't have any new goals or targets. And even though I had everything I'd wanted in my daughter, I fell into a deep, dark state of depression which led in January 2022, me sitting in my room thinking about ending my life. With that came a huge amount of guilt. If you're a father, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. How dare I think about not being here when I had a daughter to be around for? How dare I have suicidal thoughts and be stuck in a depression when I had things people would kill for? Well, the reality is as a man, I'd stopped setting goals. I'd stopped growing. And when you're not growing as a man, you're dying. The truth is, as a man, I'd always been chasing more, more money, more clients, more success, more growth, more in the bank account. And the search for more, when it stopped, left me in a place where I didn't know who I was. So in January, 2022, I made the decision, I made the choice to stop living a life where I was constantly up and down, to stop living a life where I was constantly stuck in Groundhog Day, anxious, depressed, stressed, happy some days down the next. It wasn't fair to my wife, it wasn't fair to my daughter, and it wasn't fair to myself. That was the turning point in my life where I decided I would be successful in every single area of my life. Fast forward to December 2023, and in just two short years, we've taken our business to over four and a half million dollars a year, and we're on track to do eight figures in the future. Well, how is this possible? Well, a lot of fuck ups, a lot of mistakes, and a lot of growth along the way. We've hired and fired over 30 people in the last year alone, in the last 12 months alone, and I had to learn a lot of shit the hard way. So here we go with the 10 lessons that have helped me make a lot of money and be successful, but also have a great life in the process. Lesson number one is to optimize for profit. This is where so many gurus and online successful people spit out some fucking bullshit number that doesn't mean anything. If we look at our business expenses and tracking here, you can actually see that yes, we've made $3.68 million this year, but in the last six months after taxes, we're actually down by $56,000. And that doesn't include the taxes that are gonna come out this month. So even though we've made $2 million in the last six months, after paying team, marketing costs, and the costs of running a business where I've over-invested in the business, 
there's actually no money to show for it and we have gone backwards in the war chest backwards in the money in the bank account i've realized that the number you make the amount of money you make doesn't mean anything if there's nothing left at the end of it you've got to optimize for profit profit in terms of money in your bank account but also profit in terms of health in terms of relationships You've got to have profit, AKA something left over in each of the core areas of your life. And if you're trying to be successful and provide for your family, make money, build wealth, but there's nothing left at the end of it, then what's the fucking point? Optimizing for profit is something so many people miss, and it's the most important step to actually creating freedom in your life. The second lesson here is that fulfillment, joy, happiness, they come from the journey, not the destination. I was lucky enough to have bought myself a Rolex two-tone bluesy, one of my dream watches, a $28,000 watch. And later this year, I actually got myself a Tesla. It's on a lease, but we own a Tesla. It's got the Empowered Man number plate. And I love that thing. It makes me feel really good. But guess what happened after I got each of these luxury items? I don't need much in my life. And when I got them, I felt great in the moment for about a minute. And then afterwards, I felt the sense of emptiness. I felt the sense of sadness. I got my dream watch, I got my dream car, yet both times, the day after that happened, I sat in my office crying. Because it's not about the destination. We seem to think that when we reach a certain level of success, that we're gonna be happy. When we reach a certain level of income, we're gonna have freedom. And while that's happening, we're sacrificing our time, we're sacrificing time with our family, we're sacrificing our joy and our hobbies in the pursuit of success. Now there's nothing wrong with grinding, there's nothing wrong with working hard. But if you're working hard just to get to a destination and you're ignoring the joy of the journey, the challenges, the character building that's going on for you as a man, then there will be a point where you reach that destination and you feel empty inside. Because it's never about the destination, it's about the journey. It's about the experiences. It's about enjoying the moment every single day, being present and being able to love the fucking journey. If that's something you struggle with, I completely understand. But if I could go back in time, I would really be present in the journey and every single moment that's taken me to this point. The third lesson is that your perspective is power. One of the things that I do very badly, I'm not the best at it, is I rely on stress and pain to be successful. In January 2022, when I was thinking about ending my life, my wife was also upset with me for not showing up for our family. I remember her crying, telling me with tears streaming down her face that she felt like she was raising our daughter on her own. And that absolutely broke me because I knew that I was letting my wife and my daughter down even though I was working so hard to provide for them. Since then, I've relied on stress. I've put pressure on my shoulders of being a husband, being a father, being a provider, and that pressure has allowed me to become successful. Not only do I provide for my wife and daughter, I provide for my parents for my wife Rosie's parents. I provide for everyone around me and I've created that pressure within myself. With that pressure has come a huge amount of stress. And as you're probably aware of, when you're stressed, at least when I'm stressed, I'm more irritable, I'm more triggered, I'm not the nicest person to be around. What I've realized about success and what I've realized about stress is that you don't need to be stressed to be successful. You can decide, despite the circumstances, to be happy, to enjoy the journey and to love every single challenge that comes your way. When I had team members or employees leave the business, when something negative would happen with finances or taxes, I'd be sitting there stressed out, upset, feeling negative emotions, thinking negative thoughts. When I realized your perspective is power, I began to understand that what you focus on is what you get. Where focus goes, energy flows. And your perspective is power ultimately means that you choose how you respond to every single situation. When a challenge comes up, you can look at it as a problem, as something negative, or you can look at it as a necessary part of your journey to success. When there's an argument with your partner, your perspective can be that this helps you grow and connect with each other. When you're disconnected and not enjoying life, your perspective, what you choose to believe, what you choose to see and perceive can be that you get to shift things and improve. Your perspective is power, meaning what you focus on is what you get. And on the road to success, you can focus on gratitude, happiness, love, joy, connection, 
you're the one who gets to choose. So if you're currently stressed out, under pressure, while trying to build success and provide, understand that you can decide in a split second to change that by shifting your perspective into a place of power. Lesson number four is that balance is a fucking lie. True wealth is family and health. I remember being at a boxing class 17 years ago. There was a guy in that class with me who would have weighed 140 kilos, over 300 pounds. And this guy was punching the bag next to me until he suddenly slumped to the floor. I thought he was having a laugh, having a joke. Turns out he was having a heart attack. So they rushed us to the other end of the room and started to perform CPR on this man. Now I'm an emotional guy. If you've watched my videos before, you'll understand that. If you haven't, like and subscribe. But putting that aside, I was watching them perform CPR and I started crying in that moment because I thought about how unfair it was that somebody who was trying to get healthy, 140 kilos, 300 plus pounds, was dying in front of me. I ended up finding out that he left a wife and three kids behind because he died on the way to the hospital. The reality is all the success, all the money, all the things we work hard for, they don't fucking matter if we lose our health or we lose our family in the process. Yes, we've earned over $4 million this year, but at what cost? We coach successful men here at our company, The Empowered Man, business owners, husbands, fathers, high performers. So many of those men come to us, their health is gone, they're at risk of heart attack, they're disconnected from their wife and kids, mentally they're under strain and pressure. It doesn't need to be this way. True wealth is having it all in each area of your life. And it might surprise you to know that you can have it all. You can build wealth through finances, financial freedom, because finances are important. They give you opportunity and freedom, but you can also have wealth in terms of connection with your partner, connection with your children and loved ones, time to spend with them, and wealth in terms of a healthy body that's weaponized and full of energy, and wealth in terms of a mind that's bulletproof and able to handle anything. Balance is a lie. What you've got to get really good at doing on the path to success is being able to redirect your focus at a rapid way into these different areas. There are your health, wealth, and relationships. You're never gonna have true balance between these areas, but if you can build wealth while also redirecting focus into your health and your relationships, being able to jump between all three and optimize them all at the same time, you will build true wealth in your life. An example of someone who didn't do this, Steve Jobs. Cancer, heart attacks, all these things that destroy us, a lot of it can be avoided when you have a degree of balance. True balance is a lie. It's simply focus in these three areas, knowing how to split it. Lesson number five is that you need to build a superstar team. This is a lesson I've learned all too hard or all too well this year. I did not know how to hire. I did not know how to interview. I did not know how to onboard or train. There's a trend right now of these one-man businesses out there. And sure, I could run a one-man business, but I wanna build something massive. I wanna make millions and millions of dollars a year while also having great relationships and great health. And to do that, you need people to handle that weight on the bar with you. I don't know about you, but as I've built more wealth and success, I've also increased the pressure within myself. Now we know our perspective is power, so I know I'm doing that to myself. But even though I know I'm doing it, it still doesn't go away the weight of the world on my shoulders. There's the pressure of providing, there's the pressure of business, there's the pressure you put on yourself as a human being. And that pressure is like weight on a bar. If you go to the gym and keep adding plates to each side of the bar, there's gonna be a point where that weight is too heavy and it can crush you. But if somebody comes on either side of that bar and spots that weight, helps you support it, then it's easier to carry that weight. And one of the biggest things that supported me this year is building a superstar team, building managers and leaders within my business, but also having a superstar team in my personal life, having conversations with my family, my wife, my parents, so they can support with that weight on the bar, delegating tasks, focusing on the needle movers, the things that are important in business. So many successful men, they go in the weeds, they focus inside of their wealth or business instead of focusing on building true wealth. And that's how this year we've been able to go like a bell curve exponentially with our wealth. It took 30 years to get to a million, then another two years to get to two million, and it's gonna take another year to get to five, and then less time to get to 10 and 20. It truly is an exponential curve, but I needed a superstar team. 
So the question I would ask myself in 2024, you can ask yourself is who's on my team? Who are the people I need to let go of that no longer serve me? The people who put me down or don't believe in me? And who are the people I get to strengthen on my team? What relationships do I get to strengthen with my partner, with my children, with my, my loved ones, with the people in my life so they can lower that weight or support with that weight on the bar? Building a superstar team is so important, but it will fall apart without this next step. And that next step is the lesson to expect things to go wrong so that when they do, you're prepared. Let me say that one more time. Expect things to go wrong so that when they do, you're prepared. I wrote this lesson down at the beginning of the year. I just spent a lot of time and energy hiring and trying to grow the business and build wealth. In the process, I once again began to sacrifice time with my daughter and my wife. How did I fix this? By building a superstar team. I hired the right people. I put them in the right place so we could grow and scale, achieve success while also giving me freedom, time to be with my family. And then all of a sudden, out of the blue, a key team member left our organization. He got offered way more money somewhere else and I simply couldn't match that money. If you've ever hired someone before, if you've ever brought someone into your team, you would know the cost of losing a key team member. I wasn't ready for it and it took three months to rebuild. It cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars because I wasn't prepared for that issue. When you expect things to go wrong, they might not go wrong, but by expecting them to go wrong, you're prepared. Where in your health, wealth, and relationships are you being blasé or complacent? Where are you being comfortable? Expect your partner to get upset at you for working too much. Expect a tax bill to come up. Expect financial issues or hardship. Expect things to be difficult. Success is difficult. That's why most people don't achieve it. Having it all in life is difficult. That's why so many wealthy men fuck up their marriage or lose their health. These things are not easy. So by definition, if we expect the journey to be difficult, if we expect things to go wrong, then we're more prepared when they do, because they fucking will. Life is hard, it's challenging, it's gonna get harder and harder every single year. The beautiful thing about that is, because it's so hard, most people quit, most people fail, and most people give up. But you won't give up, you won't fail, and you won't quit if you expect things to go wrong so that you're prepared when they do. This ties perfectly into the seventh lesson that's completely changed my life, and that is to build resilience and do it despite. Things are gonna be hard. Do it despite how hard it is. Do it despite the fact that you don't want to. When I'd work long hours, telling my wife I was gonna finish work early, then only come home late and she'd be upset at me, I didn't wanna to talk to her. I didn't wanna deal with that backlash or her nagging me but I'd do it despite the fact that I didn't want to. I didn't want to get out of bed at 4.45 a.m. every single day this year and work out or go to CrossFit, but I did it despite how I felt. You see, just like going to the gym, you build a muscle and you do enough repetitions, it becomes stronger. There is also a muscle within you called the action taker muscle. And when you have something hard come up, a difficult conversation, a difficult challenge in business or relationships, you do what you need to do despite how difficult it is, despite the fact that you don't want to, despite how you feel, that is a superpower. Every repetition of doing it despite how you feel builds resilience within you. And that resilience means that even though things are hard, you're able to handle them easier. You've upgraded your capacity. You operate as a high performance man, a high performance human who is able to get shit done. I've always wondered how people like Tony Robbins and people with 100, 200, 300, 1000 employees do it. Well, they do what needs to be done despite how they feel, despite the circumstances inside of their life. A question you can ask yourself going into 2024 is how many things do you avoid in your life? Do you avoid something in business? Do you avoid working out? Do you avoid eating well? Do you drink too much at the end of the day? Asking yourself the things you avoid and start doing the things that make your life better. At The Empowered Man, the business that I just showed you the revenue for, we have a very simple process you can utilize. It's called stop doing and do less lists, start doing and do more lists. What are the things you can stop doing or do less of inside of the new year? And what are the things you can start doing and do more of 
inside of the new year to achieve success. What can you achieve? What can you let go of? If you can do those two things effectively, despite how you feel, you build resilience and you win at life. The eighth lesson is very important and it's called radical responsibility. One thing that you got to realize about life is that it's no one's fault. It's not your fault. It's not their fault. Stop blaming the government. Stop blaming your wife. Stop blaming your business. Stop blaming the marketplace. Stop blaming your children. Stop blaming yourself. It's not about fault. It's about radical responsibility. The relationships in your life, the people in those relationships, they have a role to play. The marketplace, the government have a role to play in your business, but it's not worth focusing on anything you can't control. The only thing you can control is yourself, your thoughts, feelings, actions, and reactions. When I get into an argument with my partner, she has a role to play, but I get to ask myself from a frame of radical responsibility, how did I contribute to that argument? As an example, if I say something to my wife and she says, don't speak to me like that. My ego gets in the way. I blame and I say, speak to you like what? I don't know what you're talking about. When I step into a frame of radical responsibility, I tell myself, cool, clearly the way I delivered that message wasn't received well. What was my role to play here? Something happens in my business that's negative. What was my role to play? What can I take responsibility for in this situation? When you focus inward, on the things you can take responsibility for. When you focus inward on the things you can control, your thoughts, your feelings, your actions, your reactions, then you focus on solutions. And one of the biggest things I see with high-performing men is they play the blame game. They don't actually take responsibility for the quality of their life. The number one thing that's helped me build some degree of success is saying to myself, the quality of my relationships, my wealth, my happiness, my body, my mind, it's all on me. I'm responsible. And if I'm responsible, that means I'm in control. And if I'm in control, it means I hold the power to have anything I want in life. What can you take responsibility for in your health, wealth, and relationships? Where are you currently playing the blame game? The ninth lesson is to learn from everything and everyone. The reality is the only time you really fail is when you quit. There are going to be challenges that you get to push through despite. You get to take radical responsibility. But one thing I've realized throughout this year is every single moment, every single win, every single loss, every single challenge, every single triumph, every single conversation for me has been an opportunity to learn. When I made the wrong hire, opportunity to learn. When my wife and I get upset at each other, opportunity to learn. When I yell at my daughter and feel guilty, opportunity to learn. Your body is constantly speaking to you and it's constantly trying to teach you lessons. If you're experiencing any pain in your life that keeps coming up, the same arguments, the same negative thoughts, procrastination in your business or success, you're stuck in a bottleneck, not able to move forward, or you're holding on to something from the past that you just can't let go of. These are the things that prevent us from having a great relationship, from building wealth and success. Whenever that happens, it's typically because we haven't extracted the lesson from that experience, from that thing that we're holding on to. Whenever something happens in life that's positive, what can you learn from it to do more of it? Whenever something happens in life that's negative, what can you learn to move past it to grow through it? There are lessons in every interaction. There are lessons in every experience. And one thing that's helped me immensely is at the end of each day, I just write down my lessons. Even this video I'm sharing with you, is simply extracted from my journal entries from this year, something I do every single day. I write down how I'm thinking, what I'm feeling. I write down what my actions are for the day. And at the end of the day, I write down what I learned. What are the lessons you can extract from this year? The lessons that can make your life better, that can improve the quality of your health, wealth, and relationships. The 10th and final lesson is that the number one investment you can make is into yourself. I mentioned at the beginning of this video how in January 2022, I was depressed and suicidal, thinking about leaving my wife and daughter behind. That broke me. Since that moment, I've invested over $400,000 of the money that you just saw at the beginning of this video into mentoring, coaches, and systems. It began with working on myself, hiring coaches to help me with the negative patterns in my life. Anxiety, stress, pressure, overwhelm, depression, 
the things that have been plaguing me for years, I hired experts to help me work through those things. Because in life, there are many lessons, just like in the previous ninth lesson. But sometimes we have to learn those lessons the hard way. The cost of learning the lessons the hard way is going through pain, wasting time and wasting money. You can actually take back your time by investing in mentors and coaches and upgrading yourself to learn those lessons without all the pain. I started investing in coaches and mentors, systems, people to help me in all the areas I was deficient. I invested in people to teach me how to build systems for the business. I invested in mentors to teach me how to hire and build a superstar team. I invested in mentors and coaches to help me upgrade the man in the mirror. And this is the crazy thing about society. We will spend thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars on upgrading TVs, cars, phones, but we never upgrade ourselves. It's crazy how we don't do this without realizing the number one investment you can make is within yourself. I can confidently say not only have we built a $4 million a year business, not only are we about to buy our eighth property at 32 years old, but I can see 10 years from now how that will be 10 times more. And it comes down to who I've become. Now I've got a long way to go, but by upgrading myself, I'm happier, I'm healthier, I'm more in control of my triggers and thoughts, I'm enjoying life more, I'm spending more time with my family, I'm more connected to my wife and daughter, and I'm achieving success in all these different areas because of who I'm becoming, and it's a never-ending journey. The best part about investing in yourself is that when you do this, the people around you, they typically come on the journey. My wife is now investing in herself. She's got coaches and mentors. My mother's investing in herself. Everyone around me is growing. Everyone around me is becoming better. The quality of our lives are improving, and it all began with investing in myself. If you imagine you're on an airplane and the oxygen masks come down and everyone around you is about to pass out because they don't have oxygen, if you put the oxygen mask on yourself first, then you can reach to everyone else and put their mask on as well. The number one investment you can make is within yourself. And if I could give you any piece of advice right now, it's to put time, money, and energy into you. Find a mentor, find a coach, invest as much as you can into your own personal development to become the best version of yourself in 2024. So hopefully you got some value from this video. Those are 10 of the many lessons that I've learned this year as we've built or made over $4 million in a year, which is just crazy to me to this day. And I know that's gonna keep growing, but that number is simply a number. It doesn't represent the journey along the way. So if you wanna implement any of these lessons, if you got value from this video and you wanna make 2024 your best year ever, then head to the link down below. There'll be a link that will take you to a page. You'll be able to complete a quick survey and book a short 15 minute coaching session with my Empowered Man team. This is for you if you're a high performing man, husband, father, a man who wants to be successful in his health, wealth, and relationships. You wanna upgrade yourself and become the best man you can be. If that sounds like you, go down below, book a coaching session right now. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up before you leave. Have a great new year. Wishing you all the best.